Okay, this is sync scale. It's April 27th. Um, to the notes in the chat. Uh, please open it up if you've got any topics you'd like to add and under yourself as an attendee. Okay, um, let's kick things off. Okay, we, uh, so we've got um, our performance periodic job results. So, uh, I mean, I, I haven't checked this, but I'm, I'm, I haven't been able to make a change recently. So I'm assuming it's still going. Yeah, this, okay. All right, and this is looking okay. We just had a failure recently, so, okay. Yep, there are no change here. I don't need to revisit that soon. Okay. Um, and then for the other things, uh, I think this is a lay. This is just follow ups from last time, right? Yeah. So I was able to make a bunch of progress on Sweet. what, how the things are. Um, yeah. This, so this PR is out, but I think there is some race in the, um, in the logic where. We, I don't see all the three artifact directory. I just see only one, which is the last one. So I need to rework the tests here. Um, okay. That's one side of thing. This is the easier bit. Um, if you go back to the doc, the harder part is, I mean, for me, because I'm not uh, aware about it, is this next point. So, so we have the density test as well as the periodic performance uh, jobs, right? The periodic performance job is configured in such a way that there is a, an explicit artifact directory um, mm -hmm. here. So whenever I will export that artifact directory in that working progress PR, it will be a separate file in this. So you will have audit VM, dot json audit vmi dot json in that artifact directory okay so all the plumbing for that is done um we, i just have to button up that pr but okay. for the density test i don't see that artifact directory here uh, okay. so there needs to be some i i'm not sure what needs to be done in order to get that artifact directory in pro configuration. Um, that's that's the harder part I was talking about. So it looks like there is an explicit artifact variable that pro sends out. I'm not sure how it is to be consumed. Okay, let's ask Lubo, seems to know the most about this. Uh, even, um... Even this one, I think, might be good to ask Lubo's opinion as well. Okay. Yeah, right. I think once we have these two things, our um, immediate task of uh, exporting the audit output into separate directories will be done, and then we can, you know, take down other things. Okay. I was hoping we're gonna have Lubo today. Okay. So. Um, Sorry, we'll um, start a in keyword dev. Let's, we'll get his attention there. And I, I think it would probably help us close this out pretty quickly. Sure. Yeah. All right. All right. You want to go over these so we've got some more observations? Sure. Yeah. All right. All right, let me open, where did I open up? Okay, first one here. So notable observations, two patch VMI calls per VMI, 10 update calls per VMI, okay. Yeah, so the, the v, so one thing, uh, an update, the very first chart was missing in the last call that I added that metric. Uh, and it looks like over eight week period, we are quite stable on VMI creation to running. Uh, nothing surprising there periodically yeah. you'll see one or two spike every other day but then i that's just an outlier um, okay. the uh, the one i was talking about is 
if you can search for update. Yeah, that one. So it, I know it's stable, but um, it looks like we are making 10 update calls per virtual machine instance. Um, I, it looks like this might be due to reconciling the status conditions or something like that. Uh, so 10 update call per VMI lifecycle and two patch calls uh, on the same resource per VMI lifecycle. So there was something surprising for me. I don't know if you have consistently observed this uh, in the past, uh, or I don't know what the threshold is. Yeah, I forget. Let me. Um, I forget why. Uh, I, I'm just a second. So I, um, I want to look at the thresholds because, um, because I just trying to see if we actually do measure, because I see the correlation, which you're getting at here. Let's see. Okay, we do. So um, a five and then the, uh, oh, okay. So, oh wait, no, this isn't it. This is, okay, wait a second. This is, so this is VM, this is for VMs. So weekly update virtual machine instance count for, for VMI. Uh, it wouldn't be this one, right? It would be, um, yeah, it would be that. It would be that would actually. Be and yeah, you know, I think for both VM and VMI, it's constant. Here's, so yeah, it's that. Okay, so we get, so here, here's more like it. Like here's what, okay. Okay, so we actually, oh, it's just like a bug. So our threshold's 10. Um, this should be true. We're exceeding the threshold. What we should be at, um, wait a second. So, hold on, three values one, 944. Um, great pod counts. So, great pod count 94. Yeah, yeah. So, this is it. So, the threshold is 944. It's actually exceeding it here. So, the value, the threshold is 10. It's actually, this is not right. It should be exceeded. Yeah. This is, so we set this actually to be high. Like we didn't, um, <laughs> we didn't think we'd actually run into this. We, we set them to be very high, at least until like, until we could get more data to kind of narrow it down. This is, um, this is, our, this is exceeding it. So this is, uh, which test is this? This is the Wednesday uh, test. Well, right. I'm already running VMs using a single instance type. And this this goes over. This is ten to one. This is over ten to one. Wow. <clears throat> it's interesting. So on some of these, like I mean, it, it there is a rough correlation where it's like, yeah, I mean you can so hmm. So you can see this. So here's here's the view, here's the VMI crates, we're at six hundred, eight hundred. Well, I don't know why I'm looking at this. You have to graph. So, um, but this must be from this is this, this. This must be from the instance types. I'm trying to understand the data. Like, so I can. So maybe this is what. So maybe these these lower dots. Yeah, eight forty four. Okay, maybe that's what it is. That's that's really what. Yeah. I'm confused. So here we go. So like, you get some values that are like down in the six hundreds. Maybe like. Um, I don't see any down in the six hundreds, but yeah, that like must be on the VM. Uh, so if you click the uh, second link on the Google Doc, okay, uh, there is a similar one. Uh, yeah, this right? one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, and then look for update. Yeah, well, yeah. The, um... you, Wait, did I have it? 
Okay. Yeah. So this one, okay, this one's a little different. So it's over a thousand. Okay. We don't have anything down here though in the 600. Is there another one? Is there a, No, that, that's- Just those two, okay. So it's VM and VMI, okay. Can you check um, what date is that uh, periodic job from? The one you were looking with 600 value? Yeah, that was from, I mean, that was just recently. That was like, uh, like in the last day or two. Okay, yeah. So then, maybe that's why it's not in your graph. No, it should be because oh, should be. I have, yeah, I've created like last eight weeks of things. Um, yeah, is it, it should be right there on the far corner. Um, can you also check for, yeah, no. All right, let me get the exact date for you. So I'm just um, assume anything about that. Where is it? Yesterday, so the 26th. So we should see it from the 26th. We should see. So the numbers we got are from here are 628, 841, 1029. How do you get three? Um, three? Yeah, what's the 648 one? This is for, um, create a batch of 100 VMIs. Okay. Yeah. So from yesterday, <clears throat> I don't see it. So it would be like right around here. I don't know. Yeah, um, let me, uh, so if you can, you have the JSON posted, right? And um, yes. Uh, yeah, we can we can we can check the JSON. Uh, what's share. the repo again? Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. You sharing? No, I can share the the repo. It's give me one second. Yep. Where did you put it? I'll send it on Slack. Oh. Okay. So VMI, so the updates, oh, well, that's right. You you do a you do an aggregate, right? The, you um for the week. Yeah. So. But we should still see the the six hundred in here, or in no? There. Yeah. Oh, we would see it in here. Okay. Yeah, so um, is that, so I remember I saw two, two failures in data processing. Um, okay. If you don't find it here, then maybe good to check if the job you're seeing is one of the failures. Mm. Six to four. Yeah, we've got, uh... Yeah, it's like we only got one of them from 427. No, there only is one of them. No, I mean, it's 426, right? 
Yeah, I don't think it's the failure. Okay, so the two values that I'm seeing in my um, JSON are 994 and 1166. Okay, so it doesn't look like it's from this one. Unfortunately, I don't know which one I clicked on this time. Oops, what did I just do? Yes, if you want 35. Okay, so this is. This one, I think I clicked. So let's look at this one and the other one. Yeah, I don't think I have this 712 in my processing. Okay. Yeah, this is 592. Interesting. There's a, there's a really low value there. Okay. How about this one? 392, 633. No, no, I don't. No. The the uh, latest is six twenty four. After that, we I don't have any. Six twenty. Okay, I don't know where that one is. I don't know how to find that one. Are these like? In, yeah, I I have the nine twenty one. Yes. Yeah, oh, you've got this one. Oh no, this 520? is the 520. No, I have 920. Uh, okay. Sorry, did I hit did I hit one you had before? 472, 392, 272. Oh. I okay, I see 272 in here. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay, so 272. Yeah. I just had it where it was 64. Right, let's do 472, mm -hmm. 272. Okay. That was that was like this one. 424, no, I think. Sorry. Okay, hold on. The this one, it's the last three is 272, but I have uh, 8272. So oh, we're not okay. looking at the same thing. Sorry. Okay, how about I just send you the the job ID and yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. No, okay. Um, is there a specific date we should be looking? Twenty seventh today. Yeah, like it's something in the last two days, and so we'll look at it. Okay. Yeah. I've sent it on this meeting chat. Okay, this morning. Okay, so you've got this one. 788, 944, and 101. Okay. Yeah, and I think you should be able to see this in the weekly aggregate uh, okay. for this week. Yeah. So these all, uh, each of these has different numbers. So I, I don't know how these are getting. Um, I don't understand how these are getting parsed. Like if I go so, to here, 272, no, it isn't. No, I'm wrong. It's, yeah. So I think what is happening is the top level, the periodic one is the, yeah. Hold on. Huh. So why am I getting like <laughs> Oh, this is the this is the new one. Oh yeah, okay. So that okay, the one you just give me is this one right here. Okay. Yeah. I so I if you can stay on that first screen, let me share what I think is happening. The first okay. no, the 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 green graph, yeah. Yeah. So the the first one is the test um, overall test name. And then within this, there is three ginkgo tests. 
Right. Uh, and this UI is showing them separately, but internally it's all just one ID for all of them. Uh, yeah. I mean, one job ID, yeah. So that's why if you click any one of them, it will be the same job ID, but um, it's separately shown here, just for yeah. added information. Okay. Okay, so we don't, so we didn't, so we didn't scrape, so these just failed or something? Is that what happened? No. Uh, so those were, what, 392, 624? Yeah, here's 624. Yeah. yeah, I do have 624, yes. Oh, you have this one. So this has 628. We didn't see that data point. Yeah, the the update virtual machine count I have for that one is eight forty one and there's a forty one one zero two nine one zero two nine. Okay, so we've got two of them. We just don't. So we don't have this value. Okay. What does this test correspond to? Can you get? Uh, can you scroll up? It's it's. Um, it's after the, the name of it's after, after the thing, the data it's, um, this is the hundred, um, BMI density test. Oh, this is, is it the, after? Yeah, it's after. Oh, are you grabbing? Oh, you looking at the name and then, and then, um, grabbing the, so you're not line. getting this. Correct. Yes. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's the name of it is after. Yeah. Oh, okay. That yeah, so sense. like you can see right right here. So here's um, here's test two name and test three name. Yeah. Um, hold on. That doesn't make sense. So is there any audit log uh, output for the primer that happens at the very beginning? Let's see. Yeah, let, let's see for this one, right? Uh, you can scroll a little bit down. Yeah, on line 2230. Mm -hmm. So some tests started yeah. there. Uh, so I just ignored this whole part. Is that for the VMs? Yeah, this is, uh, no, this is for the VMIs, this one. This whole test is the VMIs. There are no, um, do we even do any VMRs on the other ones? Wait, I thought the other ones were all VMs. VMs. VMs, yeah, these will be, the last two are all VMs. This is pure VMI as in the first I one. I see, I see. Okay, then I think uh, uh, what I misunderstood is the, the first data point for the primer, then the second one for the um bmi and the third one for the vm but uh, okay. what actually is is that the first one is for the vmi second one is for the vm and the third one is for the instance type yeah the primer is buried somewhere i don't i just forget if it's so i maybe it's here i i that might be it um where it just gets run outside of ginkgo i forget i don't remember but yeah, this is the first one. Got it. Okay. Okay. That makes okay. That makes sense. This is really interesting. So you get um. Okay. Yeah, we're getting this. Will get us some interesting data. Let's we'll, let's see how that looks actually when when that gets incorporated. So that so the last two are VMs. They're just um like instance type rooms. Got it. So all our data so far is for VMs. VM, VM yeah. and instance type. Okay, got it. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, cool. That makes sense. I'm glad we went through that. Okay, that clears up a lot. Yeah, I think we need to fix this bug uh, as next step. Okay. Yeah. So let me let me leave a note. So we go. Um. Uh, yeah, we need to scrape. Um. How many do you want? Creation. Yeah, yeah, that 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 would be cool. Okay, let's see what let's see what that does then. So instead of um, 
or do you want to instead of going through all these i think let's let's see what you find unless you get like what other conclusions you want to talk about with these so this was weird um how about this one two patch calls per vmi yeah so i think the conclusion after today's finding is that both for both um vms through instance types and uh, normal vms there are like 10 update calls and two patch calls made to vmi okay because that our data our relevation today does not change that data right both of them are uh, for vms and instance types so right yeah we just got to characterize once we characterize it in the right place, then maybe we'll be able to make sense of it. Yeah. All right. Makes sense. So I think the VMI might turn out to be a little bit lower uh, since no one will be updating it. But yeah, we'll see. How that's we yeah, I think that that's been the mystery about this uh, <laughs> about this uh, API call. This I, I actually might explain it so that the instance type and and the VI, VMI, or the VM is doing a lot more updates than just a plain VMI. Okay, that'd be interesting to model. That that's kind of neat to see. That's a pretty inter that's a that would be interesting. A uh, like a good cross um, API relationship, and then gets into the instance type as well. I mean, that's that's pretty sweet. VM VMI instance type. We can do a relationship across all the APIs and compare. Yeah. Um, and then the next one I had is, I think you already saw it in the grid. Um, two of the jobs were failing. Uh, one for one job, it just looked like uh, not, yeah. For this one, I think something went wrong. Um, yeah, I didn't get a chance to dig into it, but it might be worth it. Okay. I mean, it looks like it was just like some sort of went away. Yeah. What was weird is the first test ran and the um, yeah. from the second one, it started failing. Um, okay. So yeah, halfway through so my test, like my scraper just broke on, on this. And then the second one, um, it looks like it started and then just never got to run. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there is anything um, abnormal since it is not consistent, but just some flakes. It's yeah. actually good to correlate it in this graph, so. Okay. That sounds good. Okay, cool. This is really cool. All right, thanks, Alay. Yeah, this is um, this is good. I'm glad we got to talk through that. So let's see. Let's see what we show. Let's see what shows up after we get this scraped in and then yeah let's i this is this is actually really good this will give us some some real uh, this will give us some even cooler data now that we can now that this makes some more sense and um at least in my mind we can yeah especially with this one we should be able to cross all of the apis and see look at their impact on the, on the api server yeah we can put a weight uh, that's interesting like we can put a weight on each of them i mean like you can see like how you know like hey being light being heavier being heavy heaviest whatever like you know you can put a weight on each of them and how they uh yeah and how they could affect scale that's good that's a really good step because that's like because in the sort of in the world of scale right when people want to ask us like how many pods you can create right it's sort of like okay how many vmis can you create versus how many vms can you create how many instance types can you create and from what you can tell, it's like the number is going to be different. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, the way it will be different is that uh, at some point, each one of these API will be tough enough for the uh, API server that API server uh, breaks. So, yeah, yeah I, I think you you've worded it nicely as to for each api we don't know that breaking point and it could be different right 
Okay, cool. All right, that's good. Let, let's continue on that path. That's some nice progress. Okay, so for the last topic, um, this is from KubeCon last week. Um, I talked with the, um, the, the guy who runs the, the Kubernetes six scalability. And um, I told him about what we've been doing and um, there was a lot of interest in having further discussions. So um, I, I, he mentioned there that they would be nice to talk more about it in their, in their six. So I offered to talk about, um, you know, to take some of our discoveries and bring it to them and we'll have a discussion. Um, so present on, you know, what we've done and talk about some of the things that are, uh, that we've worked on. And I think, you know, bring some of our ideas to them. And, and, and particularly, I think like the goal that we can, that we want to achieve is like, we've had in the back of our minds for a while now, how to, how to fully measure end to end the, what it takes to, to create a virtual machine and start a virtual machine in Kubernetes. And some of the most significant things are missing, like how much time it takes to attach a network, like that, that granularity, how much time does it take to attach storage? The kind of stuff that's totally out of scope for us which is in scope and as part of this SIG, you know, it would be something to to bring, you know, our ideas to to them and see what they think. Because I, I think we can affect this since we have a good use case. Um, and they do they they want, I think they would want this as well. But you know, this is something that has sort of been on our radar for a while. And you know, and I think I think we have ideas how to do it. So I think um, you know, talking about that, uh, our ideas and talking about how we can get some of those things through would be really would be awesome. So I think what, um, so the plan is on May 11th, um, we're going to present. So I, I think uh, we, their meetings, <clears throat> excuse me, the meetings are not very long, they're like 30 minutes. So we nearly need to cram the right amount of content into the amount of time we have and, you know, for questions and other stuff. So um, we're going to need to brainstorm a little bit on how, what we want to present. Uh, I, I think like, Similar to what we did, I, I, Leo, I was thinking we do something similar to what we did at um, Hubert Summit. We talked mm -hmm. about like our tools, how we measure what we have at our disposal for resources and the um, important metrics that we use to measure. And then I think those are the things that I might at least give us a, a note, like if, give them an idea of like, you know, how we're doing things. Yeah. Yeah. I. I was thinking that what would be good uh, like integration point, right? So if we think about that, this, what is missing from uh, Kubernetes uh, that would be helpful to, to predict more of our um, scaling behavior. And I think what you are getting at is just like how we are plotting this metrics across releases. If we can get some additional data points on the internal metrics, like how is kubelet behaving, how is API server behaving, et cetera, et cetera, um, across releases with some similar tools or, I mean, the tool does not matter, but mm -hmm. if we can get data points of how these metrics are evolving across releases in Kubernetes, I mean, that will, Okay. okay. Yeah, that, I think what that will help us do is correlate that metrics with our uh, observations. Yeah. Something like that, like record our changes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I think that would be the collaboration point. I mean, that would really help out a lot, uh, especially with Kubelet and API server metrics. It would be yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think to target this, we just kind of show like these some of these graphs and the ways that we're tracking this, and how we eventually sort of plan to do this, and that might sort of get some thoughts into people's heads and. Maybe give us some ideas and see if they have um yeah they're interested in, in doing something similar yeah i i that's a good one i, I think there's like, there's like so much that I, I i think we could do um so i i 
well, the reason though is that, I mean, because the meeting is short, we, we will try and focus on maybe one or two things at most, and we can continue to attend the meeting. I think it's like every two, two weeks or something like that. Um, and, um, and continue to bring our ideas. I, I, it's just sort of, this would be the, the plan for the introduction on the 11th, we first talk about it. And then we sort of continue to go back and, and collaborate and so. Yeah, yeah I, you know what that reminds me actually. Um, so there is a metric called kubelet end-to-end -end, um, pod start latency. Mm -hmm. We could, as part of this, um, density test also collect that metric and have it in in our graphs mm. um, the reason why i think it will be it will make more sense to do it in um, sig scale for kubernetes is that they can be much closer to the changes that's going in and can make sense for for it right like if we do it here um, we would be able to get some additional data points, but we would not be able to act on it. Like, okay, mm, what does this mean? Like, what? Just like how we are able to act on the cubebird metrics, it's it will be out of scope here. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just restating what you are saying, but two main thoughts. One is if it is helpful to expose those metrics in order to prove a point that this is really helpful, we could do that. Um, and then second, we can talk about all of these uh, these things and challenges in, in that call. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I think we, um, yeah, I mean, I think we keep talking about it. I, I think, um, We'll have, we'll have, um, you know, we can make, you know, one or two points and um, yeah, like I said, we can always, if there's sort of lots of discussion, which I think there will be, um, we can always attend a few of these and continue to discuss. Um, I, I think the, the best thing is that I, that they're excited to hear about this. And I, and I think, I think for us, like what's going to be a good learning opportunity for us. I also think that there's some things we can, we can teach. I, I do think what we're doing is really interesting and unique in, in a lot of ways, just because we've had a very focused approach to a specific yeah. part as a component, as you know, as like a owning a slice of Kubernetes, you know, yeah. and where their focus has been on nodes and, and pods and stuff. So it'll be kind of interesting when we sort of clash these two worlds and, and I think they're gonna learn some things and we're gonna learn some things. So. Yeah, I mean, that's what I think would be the goal is like when we collaborate on these things, you know, we're a little farther down the, or up the stack, I guess, okay. hearing our feedback and then also getting theirs. And I think it's just gonna make both the solutions better. So yeah, overall yeah. really positive. I think we're gonna get a lot out of this. So looking forward to it. So May 11th is the plan. We'll, we can brainstorm some more and put together what we wanna do for that, that date. Sounds good, yeah. Thank, okay. Thanks for um, you know starting this. I think this will be a good direction. Um, yeah, for both yes, of I think this will be exciting. Okay, um, this is one other thing that um, that Woshek sent over to me. This was um, a new metric that was introduced to one twenty six. Uh, pod start SLI duration. You, know, you mentioned for me to take a look at. I was asking him about like how to measure, like how, how can we measure, um, get all the details out of like how long it takes to um, get a, uh, a pod started? How can we get more out of it? What are the metrics that you have in Prometheus? And we like, you know, we like we had some gaps and we need to develop some of our own and you know, what else is there out there? And so he sent this over. So we can check this out. I mean, I don't, we don't have it right now because we, are our, our, um, we're only on 125 for our job, but um, something we can look at soon, adding um, as something we, we yeah. incorporate to our calculations. Th this is an interesting choice in the name of this metric. Um, do you know what the SLI in that metric stands for? 
in his uh he talked about it uh in his talk and i forgot I'll need to find a link to his talk. He went to it went through all the details when um, in his talk at Kikam as to what they're doing here um, with the with the SLI and SLOs. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. because I I think there are already some metrics that can give us an end to end start time. So mm -hmm. the I wonder how is this different from the old one. So that's what I wanted to understand. Like. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is great. We can dig into it. Sure. Okay. All right, that's all I had uh, for today. Does anyone have anything else in the topics? Um, Hi, Ryan. Hey, hey, Ali. So, How are you yeah. doing? Fine, so we have a longer, longer vacation, so till now I don't have time for that, but I guess that uh, from uh, May we'll have more time to help in that. Uh, I, I just want to have a question. If we want to run this uh, Prometheus query against our um, CI, do uh, like can you share with us the Prometheus, the, the, the query that you run and generate this flow? Um, sure, the the audit tool, are you looking for the metrics um, that are represented here? Uh, just the data itself uh, in the Prometheus, uh, not the, all the yep. UI. And did you split it between read and write, or you just track all on once? You understand what I mean? Yeah, I think we had a discussion about this last time. I we have not split it or aggregated it. I think we will continue to um, have these kinds of charts and much more fine grained metrics. So Ellie, you can find all the stuff here. So from the audit tool, these are the, um, wait, wait, this isn't, um, where's the Prometheus part of this? This isn't what I want. So they should run it. Phase breakdown. We define this somewhere though. No, I, mean, I think it is the. Uh, I, I this isn't exactly where we define the metrics, but. Um, this is like where we're um, basically all this is is it's grabbing um, it's grabbing them it's just grabbing them from Prometheus so I think that's what their names are is that what you're looking for Ellie I mean this is this is helpful okay we'll take a look there yeah there's also if you want um, the Qvert um, this. What is it? Prism Qvert Grafana. There's something. There's a dashboard for. That has a bunch of this. Uh, I just don't remember. Yeah, yeah, here we go. So it's got it here. So the um, if you want to also put this into Grafana and you can even see the mm -hmm. metrics here. There's, it's the, this dashboard, Marcelo added this a while ago. He added these mm -hmm. uh, in this example. So you can grab this dashboard and it'll get you started with some of the ones we use. Okay, can you put this link here in the chat? Of course. Thanks. I've also put the metric client uh, link 
the one Ryan was showing earlier, that this metric are uh, being gathered. Yeah, give that a try, Ellie. Let us know okay. how it goes. Cool. Okay. Anything else? LA, Ellie, another topic. No, I think that's it for me. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, sorry, one more thing. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, <laughs> I think so during the KubeCon time, um, we might be seeing those fake VMIs um, and, and work on that. Um, being picked up now. So cool. that, yeah, that's another thing update I wanted to give you. Um, okay. Yeah, Thanks. we don't have any concrete plans, but um, it's just something. Um, we should. Yeah, that'll be another one, another topic where we're gonna find interesting collaboration with uh, the Kubernetes SIG scale because they have Kubemark and they've got all the stuff. And, and I think they have a lot of opinions as to what's good and bad about it. So yeah. it would be interesting to see, like, I'm sure they can give us all the secrets as to like what, what they like and don't like about it. And, and sort of what, what are the, well, you know, what's the treachery with going this journey and maybe we could. Yeah. So we did some through. experiments last week and we had presented this um, in, in other call. Um, mm -hmm. And what we found out is that the, the fake objects, it really just beats up the number of objects, but it does not um, create all the watch call or the list call that a regular kubelet uh, would, would uh, create, right? And not only a regular kubelet, um, along with kubelet, there are a lot of daemon sets that are running in the on the node itself. So all of those load generators are missing. So okay. in order to- So I can yeah, fan out. We reckon the full fan out effect. Correct, yes. Okay. So we have to be very selective about what, um, how we use that tool. And then, so that's one thing as of now. And the second thing is we can do some sort of approximation on what is the number of, like what is a rough amount of load generated by uh, a running kubelet that includes all of the running services and running kubelet on top, right? And include those load generators in the, the quark utility. Um, so that will get us a little bit closer to the actual uh, state of the world. Hmm. You know, I, now I'm thinking about this project. Like, I like the idea of Kubernetes with no kubelet, but there's the, the problem of like, we see, like you just say here with the fan out, like we, we need the kubelet. In order to like I like we need the kubelet. What we don't need is the actual container. We need Kubernetes without containers is what we need. Right. It's like it's like it's like one more layer down to sort of get the to get that full effect. Correct. You know, yes. we, we want we want all so, the ammo without the without the without the container. Actually, oh, even without the container, it would still be the same problem, right? Because I think the amount of load that kubelet generates on the API server um, would be one part of it, but then the running containers that are infrastructure services, right? For example, in the case of kubeword, the word handler, which is actually a running uh, container on the node, it generates another set of load for it. Um, then let's say Multus or some kind of network plugin that generates, that is the third load generator. Um, storage, let's say if you have some kind of CSI that has a per node component. So that's the fourth load generator. So I think even without the containers, there are all these load generators and what this um, fake tool is missing is a context of these uh, load generators. So we need to build some kind of uh, notion of a uh, per node load generator in, in this tool that can get us a little bit close to um, what a real uh, node can generate on, on API server. Hmm. Well, so that so that's what I that's kind of what I meant, or I meant what I meant is um 
we would still have the pot, we'd still have the containers, the load generating containers, um, but we wouldn't have the the workload, I guess. Yeah. Like imagine, imagine this. Um, imagine if the, the CRI layer, the CRI layer had the concept of like a fake container, where it like, um, where all it did is it basically created the pause container, you know, just like, and that's it. And, and whenever you created a VM, and no matter what you did, it created a pause container. That'd be like, that would be like what, that would be, that'd be like what I'm talking about. Like, so you'd have bird handler there and everything and all those pods running it just it creates a pause container now that's not yeah i think that's there's... a great idea yeah so if we can hack the container runtime let's say on some annotation right it just does not create that actual workload and then everything else continues to reconcile that workload um, yeah actually then we don't have to do much right <laughs> yeah. yeah we just we just create the pause a bunch of pause containers huh yeah maybe that maybe that would work hmm Okay, interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it should do some more brainstorming around that, but um, that that is the conclusion TLDR of what we discussed this week. Okay. When when Cubone was going on, yeah. Okay, sounds good. That's cool. Yeah, let's can continue to discuss that. I think that's just an area you know we're going to get a lot more interesting ideas from the Kubernetes six scalability. So let's see what we. See, we can find out more brain sorry yeah okay cool all right guys if there's nothing else we'll call it a meeting thank you thanks for coming this week we'll talk to you guys later yeah thanks everyone thank you